Welcome to IT Pro TV. I'm your host, Don. You're watching IT Pro TV. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting edition of IT Pro TV. I'm your host, Vaughn Smith, and this is our Cisco Cloud Fundamentals series. And we are in our cloud networking topic area. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at our Cisco Nexus 1000V. Sounds like a shiny new robot. And <laughs> here to help us, who is not a robot, is Mr. Ronnie Wong. How are you? I'm doing well, Vaughn. Thank you again for joining us as we continue on through our cloud journey together, right? Cloud fundamentals, and we are taking a look at it from the Cisco perspective. So that means we've spent a lot of time going over some basic topics as well as jumping into some Cisco software. Today, we're going to do both. We're going to talk about some Cisco hardware, software, and then the idea of virtualized software or appliance, uh, or virtualized hardware, an appliance that we call, of course, the Cisco Nexus 1000V. Now, this particular idea of the V, right, when you look at uh, Cisco 1000V, that means that it's a switch, okay, that is virtualized as part of the Nexus series, which means, of course, uh, it's one of the newer switches that, that's out, out there, okay? And this was developed in conjunction with VMware, okay, is what it was. And so they've actually made it and really customized it to that point where it actually fits in well with all of the VMware technology is what it's about. So when we start to take a look at this idea of actually using something like this, it's very important because it's probably the heart of a lot of the cloud technology that we actually do connect to, but without needing physical ports to do so, okay? So that's why it's actually very important. It combines together two elements uh, that are really helpful. One is what we call the NXOS, which is kind of like the Cisco iOS itself, but much more updated to be able to handle some of the network programmability stuff that we need to, okay? The other aspect of this, of course, is something we've already mentioned inside of the infrastructure virtualization show or, or uh, episode, which is the idea of the distributed virtual switch. So the idea here is when we combine them together, right, uh, the uh, uh, Cisco iOS or NXOS and the actual VMware distributed virtual switch, what came out of that particular product, of course, is a product that we call that Nexus 1000V. It's been a very popular uh, uh, way to actually do virtualization switching uh, for quite a bit of time now, and this actually works very well because of that, uh, you know, that synergy. I hate using that word uh, between uh, uh, VMware and Cisco. I, I really don't like that word, but really? everybody uses it. Yeah, and they use like it for the last it. thirty years. But uh, it feels yeah. it feels nice and happy. Happy, you know? yes. Yeah. Happy energy. Yeah, We're happy energy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. So. <laughs> But overall, though, it, this is a very neat technology. Okay, so before we take a look at that, let's go ahead and take a look at my screen. And this, I think, will help us out a little bit. All right, Vaughn, so over on the left-hand side, this is the Nexus uh, 9000 uh, or 9508. This is a relatively large switch, as you can tell. Notice there's a lot of ports. Okay, so each one of these blades here that you see represent uh, 48 ports. So there's 16 in each of the three groupings. And there's... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's a lot of ports on this particular switch when it comes down to us connecting to what we need to. Okay. So uh, when you start to actually take a look at a, a fairly big switch, this idea of the 9508 is a hardware switch. And Vaughn, did you just do the multiplication for me? Uh, that was 384. So it was 48 times 8? 48 times 8, yeah. Mm -hmm. So 48 times 8, 300 and 84. 84 actual ports on the switch. Now, that means, in theory, right, if we were actually connecting, you know, to this, we could have that many possibilities as well, okay? So that many possible connections. Now, Vaughn, I didn't even include the uplink ones, which are also over here, so we could have add in some more, but we're not going to, but we'll just kind of take a look at it for right here, okay? So this one is a piece of hardware, fairly heavy hardware, but you can also end up doing that too, okay? Now, along with that, that idea of the Nexus series, it's designed to be this chassis-loaded uh, switch here, fairly super high performance to be able to do so and can connect to a ton of different things. But if I scroll down, you can also see that it has some uh, different things too, okay? It has some redundancies. So notice on this layer, there's actually two different blades 
but they're horizontal. So here's one on the left-hand side, right here, okay? And here's also one on the right-hand side. So these are, are part of what they call the supervisor module, okay? So the rest of these are essentially what we call line cards. They represent individual switches, if you want to actually call them that, okay? But they're all controlled through this right here, which is going to be our supervisor module, and there's two of them. And this is held and designed for uh, the idea of active and passive here. So in case one fails, the other one can pick up, we can do that too, okay? Also notice that there's actually four different uh, power supply connections to help us out as well. So depending on the need and the power that's provided here, we can do quite a bit. So that's the fairly traditional networking a way that we would generally end up looking at switches. Now, I actually used a, a, a very large switch here to help us out by comparison because the cloud doesn't tend to actually connect to well, individual small switches too often. But when we come to the Cisco 1000, or the Cisco, the Nexus 1000V, it can virtualize just about all this stuff that we see in the 9508, okay? So instead of actually having hardware, what the Nexus 1000V does is it creates what we call the VEM, or VEM, okay, which stands for the uh, Virtual Ethernet Module. So each VEM, or VEM, that's created can connect and actually be represented as one of these different cards. So it essentially represents a single switch, if you want to actually say that. So the Nexus 1000 here, like this particular VEM, it can actually be equal, to, you know, be actually of, of these up here, okay? So if you have two of them that are connected, just like I do in my virtual infrastructure that I'm showing, well, that would be represented by one of these two cards, okay, as well. So that's what it connects to. Now, in the diagrams that you might end up seeing on the exam, okay, they do change what, what they're actually seeing. So notice, Vaughn, this actually looks a little bit weird in its diagram here. This is actually the, the right particular stencil for the VEM. <laughs> So pay attention to some of these things as you take a look here, okay? Now, I do not have, there's not actually a, 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 a diagram representation of the 1000V, so I just chose the one that was available in Visio to actually make it work, okay? But on the VEM, it's actually there, okay? Now, when we have something like that, that allows us, like I said here, to be able to actually do connectivity for VMs uh, to, uh, within a single ESXi server if we need to. So each one of these could actually be that same representation that we might say there's a single VEM or VEM for each EX, ESXi. I'm not going to be able to say that, okay, host. The other thing that we also need to understand as well is that this is equivalent to any one of these eight blades that we have. But for one reason or another, they're very, very specific, Vaughn, about the order of these blades, okay? So when you start to take a look, on this, the way that this, uh, if I can actually zoom in a little bit more here, the way that this ends up working is that VEMs, they don't start down here. So one of these is blade number one, one of these is blade number two down here on the horizontal ones, but anywhere between three, which is the next one up, going all the way up to the top here, okay, VEMs can actually be represented by slots like that, essentially, okay? Now, what about the other side then? It was actually representative of that 9508 in the virtualized environment. Well, this is where we would go to, uh, let me see if I can actually zoom up a little bit more. We're going to have to just go full screen here because you're not going to be able to see it. Okay. So now notice that there's also virtualized VSMs. Okay. So these are supervisor modules over here on the left, but inside of the Cisco 1000V or the Nexus 1000V, we now have virtualized supervisor modules, okay? And this is actually what controls and synchronizes with the actual vCenter management, okay, is what it also does. It's always normally deployed, deployed in these pairs where you have an active VSM, you also have a standby VSM, and they always and only fit into one of these. In other words, they're only represented by the actual module one and module two in a physical environment when you do something like that. Okay, so that's actually kind of the key here to do this. Now, the reason why we want to make sure that we point that out is because there comes a point, Vaughn, where, man, I can deploy as many of these as much as I can afford, OK? 
okay? Same thing, the Nexus 1000V is not the cheapest thing in the world either. But Vaughn on these, because they're virtualized, I can deploy them anywhere around the world that I need to, and I can run them through the vCenter uh, uh, type of management software, okay? So that's what gives us the flexibility and the ability that we need to help us out and do what we need to, okay? So that 1000V is actually a very important aspect of cloud virtualization for the Cisco product and everything else that it does, okay? Now, once you actually get to something like this, there are some products that also work with the 1000V. Uh, there is actually a Nexus, uh, make sure I'm telling you right, okay? Nexus 1110, which was also to help us to control the uh, cloud platforms. That is no longer anything that you have to worry about. At one point you did, but now it's actually end of life uh, as of August 5th, 2016. So that's probably not something that you actually have to worry about, especially on the exam. So that's something else that you can actually kind of understand too, okay? So this 1000V has its place in the uh, cloud infrastructure of networking for the Cisco cloud environment. All right, Vaughn, that's enough talking for me as far as just talking. What I want to show you is how we would normally access it, okay? So Vaughn, over here on the Cisco 9508, it's the way that I would traditionally access any of these things, right? Okay, so on here, I would plug into a console cable and I would be able to gain access into the command line and when I do so, I would actually be able to access any of these things, okay? Through the command line, exactly the way I do just about any other Cisco switch. Now, some of the commands are a little bit different, but I can also access it programmatically and using automation software as well. So we can actually do all that. The Nexus 1000V is actually more flexible in that way. This is virtualized and can run inside of, uh, or excuse me, run on the ESXi uh, types of servers and be managed by vCenter. Well, here I have the management platform, which is the vSphere web client, okay? Now, if I want to actually take a look at how the vSphere web client looks at that 1000V, what I need to be able to do is come down here to actually be able to show you a couple of things, make sure I'm actually telling you right, okay? So I'm simply going to select uh, on the left-hand side, networking. <clears throat> and once I'm inside of networking, I'm going to scroll down and you'll see that there's a D, uh, D cloud DC. There's a VSM folder and inside of the VSM folder, that is the uh, representation of what that virtual supervisor module is. So when we connect into the Cisco 1000V, we're not connecting just to any of the switch, we're connecting directly into the supervisor module is what we're connecting to, okay? Now, once we configure that one out and we're actually able to connect here, I want to see how everything in the virtual environment, Vaughn, is actually plugged in to this virtualized switch. Well, over on the right-hand side, if I select configure, and then I can go to topology here, and when I do so, in a moment, it will give me a representation of how this uh, kind of works, okay? Remember, this is just a virtualized representation of what we're seeing. On the top, I'm gonna select Topology Plus, so it gives me a little bit more details. And the details show me that it actually applied a filter, and when I take a look and I hover over the little icon for the, future, uh, for the filter, it says distributed port groups, okay? That essentially is the same idea here. Uh, when we start talking about the idea of the distributed port groups here, the same as something like a VLAN would be very similar, and we'll get into more details on that later on, okay? Also, how many actual ESXi hosts am I talking about? Well, it's actually showing two of two, okay? And then how many virtual machines is also being shown here? Notice that there's actually eight of eight being shown. So in the diagram that you see, the representation of the topology, over on the left-hand side over here, okay, this is essentially the same as that idea of the port groups or the distributed port groups. Port groups are essentially equal, like I said, to the idea of VLANs, okay? So not exactly 100%, but that's how they have it listed here, okay? So here's the VLANs. Now, inside this, I can show a little bit more if I want to and see some of the details of every single VLAN and see what's actually happening here. And notice that it doesn't see actual physical ports. It sees an ephemeral binding, which means it's temporary in what it does, okay? There's also, of course, additional properties, policies that can be applied. We don't have anything applied here, so I'm simply gonna close that out. Over on the right-hand side, though, Vaughn, when we start taking a look at something like this, this is all where all the uplinks are. This is what connects us into, you can see, the actual NIC itself. So now, 
this is what makes that connection. In between this kind of gray vertical bar that you see, this is what is representative of the Cisco 1000V. So the 1000V helps us to create or connect the port groups that we have, and then individual virtual machines are in that port group. It connects into the 1000V, and then it makes a connection out to the NIC itself. Okay, So it can actually be able to relay and do what else it needs to. So from here, you can do a lot of different things, and of course, even configure additional, not directly from that one, but you can see the properties, you can see the policies that's been applied, but using the overall vSphere web client then, you can go ahead and actually configure more information that you want to and make sure that you actually get all the settings that you need to put in properly and to do everything else that you need to do. So there's quite a bit, as I uh, take a look here, Vaughn, over on the left-hand side, notice I can do the demo VLAN, and I could create a port group if I wanted to. So here you can configure them. This is an uplink group. This one's another port group right here. You can go ahead and actually start adding in more and more and more permissions, ports, VMs, whatever you want to connect, all that's actually going to be part. If there's anything here, nope, there's nothing on that one. I think the first one is the one that had something in it, but I could be wrong. Uh, wherever that is. No, oh, sorry. That was the first one, wasn't it? Management? Might be. Wrong. So if there's any VLANs, it would actually show up here, but I'm not actually finding them. But you can kind of tell and see that if they were here, they would actually go ahead and show up. So, Vaughn, we can manage everything directly from this if we wanted to. But, Vaughn, what if you're like me and you go, nah, this is, this is too fancy. I don't like this, okay? I want to go directly to the command prompt itself. Well, I can bring up PuTTY, and then when I do so, I've already got the profile saved. So I can select that profile. I'm going to load that up, and let me verify that I have the right point uh, font. I'm going to change that font up so we can see it fits a little bit more. Click OK. And now I'm going to click Open. Vaughn, looks like I'm actually ready to log in here. So we'll log in. See if I actually typed in the password. And right away, Vaughn, you can see where it actually tells us the Cisco Nexus Operating System NX, NXOS software. That's the one that's running. And I am at a regular command prompt right on that virtual switch. So even though there's no hardware for me to console directly into, I can actually go ahead and begin some of the configuration that I might want to be able to do. So for example, if I want to actually see the module itself, show module, and when I do so, I can see a couple of different things. Okay, I can see my virtual supervisor module, which of course is what, the VSM. I can see the virtual ethernet module as well. Okay, and you can see that this one right here is actually active and okay and ready to go. I'll have to zoom out a little bit so that I can, it won't let me go past the, okay. Uh, let me go down here, okay. Notice that the next little grouping here shows me the ESXi. That's the v virtual machine host uh, that I can also end up seeing. And there's two of them. If I continue to scroll down, I can even see the server IP addresses that are all listed right here as well. So that shows me just some of the details that I can connect into. I'm trying to be able to get this to where it's not going off the edge of the screen, but I don't know if I'm actually able to do so. There we go. All right. A little bit closer. Okay. All right, so let's see what else we can do. What it, does the regular commands that I know, does that actually work? Notice I can go ahead and just do some of the commands here for my configuration prompt. And if I want to create a VLAN, well, that's a little bit different as well. So let me do here, let's do 15 through 19. Now I've gotten into the VLAN configuration if I wanted. Now remember that we're not actually creating, like we're not putting interfaces because there's no physical interfaces into this VLAN, which is normally what we do on a switch. But what would we would create is a port profile and this type, because it's a virtual one, is a V Ethernet. If I spelled Ethernet right. And we'll just give this one name. We'll call it 2019. 
we'll call it port profile. Okay, so that will create for us a v a virtual Ethernet uh, port profile. And now when I do so, I can now add in the interfaces or technically or the uh, what I want to do. So I make that port profile a switch port mode access. So I'm actually making it into an access port profile. And then I assign it to a VLAN. So I can assign it to VLAN 19, just as an example here. Make sure I don't shut it down. So Vaughn, that's just a sampling of what can actually be done when we do this, okay? So once we get that, Notice that it's just a regular configuration. So whether you're just like me, you kind of like the command line as far as configuring the devices, or whether you're more comfortable in using the vCenter to actually do the configuration and to find all the little buttons and clicks that you want to actually be able to do, it can actually work for you. So it has its particular uh, diversity in a lot of the things that we do here. Okay? So once you actually have all that down and you kind of understand that, you can see why people like to deploy this because it means we're no longer limited by the hardware and where I can put hardware after a while, okay? Because after a while, even the cables, Vaughn, imagine 384 cables, and now you buy 10 more of those things, all of a sudden it becomes a gigantic nightmare in terms of just regular cable management. Right here in the environment that we're actually talking about, you actually are able to run that Cisco Nexus 1000V, and Vaughn, if I needed 384, you know, uh, port groups, I could do the same thing. If I need to deploy another switch in another location, I'm not actually having to buy a lot more hardware, find a lot more power, find a lot of this. It's all going to be handled inside of, well, our vSphere management here to be able to do so. And that's what makes it neat, okay, is all that can actually be managed this way instead. So it is another way to be able to gain access to everything, and this is an important part of at least the basics and understanding what's the fundamental appliance that we would normally use to make the cloud creation in terms of the networking, it's going to be the Cisco Nexus 1000V uh, is actually the key there. Okay, so Vaughn, that's a bit of a little review of the basic hardware, or I keep saying hardware, of the virtual appliance that we actually have. So just remember the actual e equations, there, right? The actual VEMs, right? The virtual Ethernet uh, modules themselves. Okay, they're equivalent to a line card in that 9000. The VSMs, the virtual supervisor modules, are equivalent to the supervisor modules in that Cisco and that Nexus 9500 as well. Okay, So those are actually key, uh, making sure that you understand that particular element. And then we showed you that you can uh, manage it and configure it through, of course, the vCenter itself, or you can also go directly to the command line. All those are actually key elements as well as you get ready for the exam. So be willing to actually kind of understand that those basic premises and understand the technology behind it, and that's, uh, that will actually be a good review for you as you also get ready for this particular exam. All right. Well, thank you so much for all that great information, Ronnie, and a nice little demonstration. And thank you all out there for watching, but we're going to go ahead and sign off for IT Pro TV. I've been your host, Bon Smith. And I'm Ronnie Wong. We'll see you soon. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV.